Good morning, this is an Shaman Oracle reading for this new week, and today I'm reading for Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer, and this reading here is for Taurus. Welcome, Taurus. The reading starts with the Moonology Oracle card, and out for you came Full Moon in Aries. And the Full Moon in Aries card is about a fiery climax approaching. It is time to see if you have been a little bit too much. Me, me, me. There is a tug of war going on between what you want and what someone else wants. But you will have to wait a little while to see what's going to happen next. As you wait, ask yourself if you have been handling the situation as sensitively as you could have done. If you know deep down that you have been a little rash or harsh, gone too fast or even overstepping the mark, then accept that on some level you have created this situation yourself, which means you can create your way out of it as well. When this card comes up, a peak is coming and it could be fiery. Attune to the moon by being nice and kind and smile and be polite as you navigate to where you want to be. Additional meanings for the card, they are being assertive is good. Just do not write over anyone. If you are in a tense situation, meditate your way to peace. Don't be a baby and sorry, this card might suggest that you have been a little bit that baby. You need to have more fun. The teaching of the card is that a full moon in Aries is a super fiery time when emotions can run very high. On the upside, there is excitement about what may lie ahead, but tempers are likely to flare <coughs> with rash comments or decisions. No matter when you pull this card or it comes up in your reading, it signals that the, situation, that the situation has just or is about to come to a peak, perhaps in a rather heated way. There could be a price to be paid if you have been too competitive or too plant. And now, Taurus, I'm sending you on a journey. Yeah, a journey that goes to the United States to visit Big Horn. The energy focus of the card is principles, and the location is Wyoming and Montana in the USA. Bighorn is a Native American spiritual heartland, a stunning area of mountain range and forest that straddles two adjacent countries, no, two adjacent counties in Wyoming and Montana. In Montana, the creed of the white man brought the native Sioux tribes of the Lakota northern Cheyenne and the Arapago together to fight at the Battle of the Little Bighorn 1876. And this battle is also known as Custer's Last Stand. Despite the death of General Custer and the defeat of the U.S. Army during this engagement, by 1880, all the Sioux had been forced into reservations and General Custer was portrayed as the all-American hero. The motivation was creed, 
for the gold of the Black Hills. Ask yourself now, have you grown up believing that material success is all that matters? Were you taught that a good life means a fancy car and a big house, regardless of the cost to others and also the environment? Near the top of Medicine Mountain in Bighorn National Forest is the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. This stone circle with 28 radial rows of rocks has for centuries been used by the Crow tribe for fasting and vision questing and as a place for offering healing prayers for people and for Mother Earth. The medicine wheel teaches harmony and the sacred connection of all beings. Consider it as a shamanic map of your life, covering your evolution through infancy, adolescence, adulthood and elderhood A medicine wheel also reflects the four seasons and the four directions. Walking the wheel imbues you with personal power and responsibility. Are you attuned to your spirit and the earth? Or do you demonstrate little respect for the circle of life? Now is the time to spend Sometimes thinking about your principles for living in right relationship to the earth. Sitting Bull, the Hang Papa Lakota Holy Man, greets you. He was a great spiritual leader who had many visions, including one of the downfall of Castor. Before his people's victory at Little Bighorn, He performed the sun dance, cutting the flesh from his own arms more than 100 times in sacrifice. Ask, what are you prepared to give to create spirit? After the battle, Sitting Bull went into exile and was eventually confined to a reservation allowed to leave only to join Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show. In 1890, he was shot and killed by police in his own home. Can you stand up for what you believe in, however others try to humiliate you? Can you let go of the material things in life, if great spirit should call you. This card calls you to awaken to what is important for the world and for your own spiritual life and to consider what you may need to sacrifice to preserve it. Now you are asked to create a medicine wheel by going into nature and mark out a circle, whatever size feels right to you. You must use sticks, stones, leaves, or even crystals. Now mark a cross through the center, dividing the circle into the four directions. North represents winter and being grounded. East represents spring and creativity. South represents summer and love and relationships. And the West represents autumn and emotions and psychic abilities. Then stand in each quarter in turn with your arms outstretched and look up as you say words such as these. I call upon the guardians and gatekeepers of the north. Keep me protected and show me what I need to release from my life in order to walk my true 
pass. Show me the way. Now ask for whatever it is you require from the other directions in turn. Be aware of your feelings, which direction offers comfort and which does so less. Go within yourself and allow the answers to surface. Take your time. When you have finished, turn to face each direction and give thanks to the Great Spirit before stepping out. Now we come to the Oracle of the Seven Energies and the card that came out for you is Body and Soul. And this deck assigns different energies to the cards like Earth, Water, Fire, Love, Sound, Light and Thought. And the Body and Soul card is an Earth card. The key concepts, they are taking care of yourself, seeing yourself as a complete package of body, which is not separate from your soul and centered in your sense of self, comfortable in your body, your authentic identity and your physical health. Extreme self-care is called for when you receive this card. Answer truthfully, are you taking care of yourself? Your first choice may be to care for other people before meeting your own needs. So check in with yourself. Are you experiencing some hunger, some anger, <clears throat> some loneliness and tiredness? This card is a signal that it is time to take a break from your current focus and get busy taking care of yourself because you are worthy of this care. What simple things require your attention so you can function better in your world and live your best life a day at a time? Another message that this card holds is about how you live with authenticity. Can you be at ease within yourself, you doing you, with pride and self-worth? Remember you are a soul that manifests through a body, a spiritual being having a human experience. And that means that you are here on purpose, even if there are days when you wonder about that. There is an intentionality to your being here now, just the way you are in this time in our collective story. You being here is important, for you are a precious being with a purpose, even if it seems elusive some days. Just know that life loves you with that in mind. Your job is to do your part to make your experience a healthy one. How you nourish your body, your mind and your soul is directly related to how you experience your life. It is time to put yourself first. Then everything will fall beautifully into place. Now we come to the Goddess Power Oracle card and out for you came Yuki Ona. And Yuki Ona is about stillness. And the empowerment message here is <clears throat> that the Japanese goddess of winter, Yuki Onna, calls you to practice of daily meditation and stillness to prepare you for greater productivity and results. Being open and receptive, slowing down and allowing for time to dream activates your partnership with the universe so you can truly set your intentions 
in motion. Then, almost without effort, you discover their vibrational match in the world of form. Just as the life force quietly builds within a seed, buried under snow, so too will the energy built in the seed of your desires before manifesting, with no effort on your part. You will find how easy it is to co-create while implementing a practice of stillness and receptivity. Let others make the first move at this time as you assess and observe the world around you from the profound position of stillness and neutrality. In this way, the world becomes more intimate, yet you know to take nothing personally. When the goddess Yuki Ona comes to support you, she is asking you to be still and wait for miracles. The action now is non-action. There is an alignment message. Some days you wake up frozen, stuck and unable to move due to the effects of emotional denial and resistance to what is in front of you. Or maybe you are exhausted from the emotional burden of your current situation. The winter goddess Yuki Ona has come to help you move out of this experience into a healthier state of stillness. When you are frozen, it is the ego that is refusing to accept life on life's terms, potentially causing you fear and depression. A particular situation or person may be causing you to see yourself as a victim. The goddess Yukiana reminds you that this is but a temporary moment in the millions of moments of your life. The task she has for you is to answer one question. Will you trust the great goddess in the universe to be your active partner in co-creating. If so, slow down and let all your troubles go and you will see the miracles in your life that will come to pass. And the last card for you is Wisdom of the House of Night, and out came Oath. And the Goddess of Nyx says to you, My lovely child, you have chosen the symbol for Oath. This is the symbol for all promises, and it is a reminder to keep the ones that you have made. An Oath is never made lightly, nor in chest. Promises are meant to be honored. When you choose this symbol, perhaps it is time you look at how you have made your promises. Have you crossed your fingers behind your back, relinquishing the magic that binds you to your oath? Has anyone broken his or her promise to you? Let a person go. Don't hold on if someone refuses to be honorable. You do not want this person in your life. For now, the most important promise you can make is to yourself. Promise to be kind, loving, honorable and good. Do no harm. To belong to me, you must keep that promise says the goddess Nix. So, Taurus, that was your reading. I thank you very much for listening. I wish you a wonderful week ahead. Take care and goodbye.